You respond to what you perceive, and as you perceive, so shall you behave. So, and then he, he, he jumps into the golden rule. You know, everybody's familiar with the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He says, the golden rule asks you to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This means that the perception of both must be accurate. You have to have a correct perception of others, and you have to have a correct perception of yourself. Otherwise, we're back to that behavioral thing. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. And it, Jesus is saying it goes much deeper than, than just trying to return kindly acts or to, to act kind and hope others will act kind to you. It's like you have to perceive correctly. And the way that first sentence is, is there, you respond to what you perceive, and as you perceive, so shall you behave. It gives you a real sense that behavior is just like this, this effect that comes automatically from after the perception. In other words, if I perceive attack, my per behavior will, will be a response to that perception of attack. It's not responding to what somebody is seemingly doing on the level of, of form but it's my perception or the meaning that I'm giving to what I see on the level of form. A good example would be, the, I think, the movie uh, Being There with uh, Peter Sellers. And he, he plays this Chauncey Gardner, this innocent, um, real innocent, like childlike gardener who goes out into the world after these years in seclusion and, and a, a group of, uh, like a, a gang in an inner city. He's been in this, in this house his whole life. He's never been out. And a gang comes up to him as he's walking down the street the first time out in his life. You know, he's, he's up in years. And they come up to him and they start, you know, hey, honky, and they're, they're cussing at him and they pull out their knives and they're going up to his face, you know, with their knives right up to his nose. And he's just just looking at him, you know, real innocent. <laughs> you know, all he's ever known is television. And, and after they persist with, with the language and cussing at him and, and pointing these knives at him, he finally reaches into his pocket and he's got his little TV changer. And he goes like this, like, I don't know if I like this channel. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the channel, you know. But it's, but it's like this total defenselessness, you know. He's not, he's not flinching. He's not ducking. He's not running. He's not his face isn't tensing up. And and basically that's kind of an extreme example of, you respond to what you perceive, you know. It's, it's you have to perceive attack before you can respond in a defensive way. And so that's. I mean, that's a real basic metaphysical cornerstone tonight when we go into things that, that you have. It's what you perceive. It's the meaning that you give to the images that are in front, that the eyes are seeing, that, that really is crucial. In psychology, for years, they've, they've tried to figure out what comes first, you know. It's kind of like um, when you see a bear and, <laughs> and you start to run, you know. Do you think, oh, I'm afraid, I have to run? Does the fear come first? Does the what comes first? You know, does the you start to get all sweaty and your heart starts to go fast? In psychology, for years they've been wondering, you know, what comes first? What's going on in the mind, or what's going on in that brain that, that's having it, making it come out that way? In the course, here's here's the master psychologist Jesus who's laying it out and saying, well, you have a mind, and your thoughts is where it's all happening. That basically, you know, if you have a fearful thought or an ego thought, he would call it, you know, then fear is produced as an effect of that ego thought. It's not like the emotion comes first and determines the thought, or the emotion doesn't necessarily determine the response, like of, of heavy breathing or sweaty palms or whatever, but it's the thought that comes first. So once again, that's helpful if you're studying metaphysics to say, ah, oh, if I've got to get to the source of the problem, I need to get to my thinking. If I'm feeling upset, if I'm feeling jealous, or I'm feeling hurt or abandoned or I'm depressed or one of thousands of emotions, the Course simplifies it and says those are all just sprays of fear. There's basically only two emotions. Isn't it nice? Truth is simple. Instead of having to, to learn you got 15,000 emotions, no. He says you got two emotions, love and fear. And then he goes even further to say that, that there's two thought systems in your mind. One's the egos and one's the Holy Spirit's. When you're listening to the Holy Spirit and you're lined up with that thought system, you're going to feel loving, peaceful, joyful. When you're listening to that other thought system in your mind, you're going to feel fearful or one of those thousands of, of emotions that are not, don't feel good. It can be boredom even. <laughs> boredom is a, a spray of fear. Uh, 
you know, envy, just it doesn't really matter. So that really simplifies things, that there's these two thought systems in the mind. There's not three or four, you know, it's just two. And that you're choosing one or the other every single second of every single day, even in nighttime, you know, when you're sleeping and dreaming. The mind is very active and powerful and it's continuing to choose between these two thought systems. You have a nightmare, you know, you wake up in the sweat of terror or whatever, you know, it's, it's still the same thing, it's still choosing the fear-based thought system. So that's good news. Now we got it to that point. Now it's like, well, if there's this confusion going on and I'm choosing between love and fear, I've got to start to be able to tell them apart and I've got to start to get clear in my mind and have some discernment about these thoughts that are going on in my mind because other than that, then it seems to be like the emotions just come. It seems to be almost like the emotions are, are, are the first cause. You know, sometimes it seems like there's something that happens and we have a reaction. But other times, have you ever had those times when you're just kind of having a melancholy day and you don't know where it came from? <laughs> or you're feeling a little down or depressed or a little fearful and anxious, but you, you're you trying to think, what is it? You know, it's like it seems to be buried way down there. And really, it comes down to the mind is either choosing love or fear. So. We have to get into talking about the mind. We have to get into talking about beliefs, unconscious beliefs in the mind, you know, to really get down to, to get at what's going on. So this is what the course is about. Now to spring on the idea we just had, I was going to jump ahead to page 200, and uh, I don't know what that would be in the new one. It's, it's just a continuation of our first idea. And it says, but truth is real in its own right, and to believe in truth, you do not have to do anything. Isn't that a nice idea? To believe in truth, you do not have to do anything. I think a lot of times we think of the spiritual journey as like, ugh, it's going to be a long, hard journey with lots of work, and I'm going to have to do lots of stuff to get there. And he says, to believe in truth, you do not have to do anything. Understand that you do not respond to anything directly, but to your interpretation of it. Your interpretation thus becomes the justification for the response. So that kind of just carries the idea that we've talked about, where it's it's an interpretation that the mind's making of what's going on on the screen. That's that's where the problem is. That that really well, the only problem we have is we have an interpretation problem. It, if you grab the lesson from the course, it would be lesson number two. Um, I have given everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. You know. I'm giving it the meaning. Two, three people see an accident happen on a corner. Eyewitness account. So they take down, what did you see, you know? Well, you get three interpretations. You know, you go to a movie, you go to a theater. It seems to be quiet movie, and all of a sudden the guy in the back just starts laughing. One guy out of the whole movie theater just is laughing. He's, he's, there's something funny there. In his mind, he's interpreting what's happening on the screen as, as funny. That's not the way that we've been raised to think in a sense of that's not the way in the past we've thought. In the past we've learned it's been like that movie made me laugh, that person's funny, he makes me laugh, that person hurt my feelings, you know, that person just aggravates me so much I can't stand him at work or whatever. It's all something that someone is doing, you know, behaviorally is, is the cause and my mind is upset because of what they're doing. And, and all, the only thing the Course is doing is saying, well, you got it backwards. It's the other way around, that it's your interpretation of your brother's behavior. It's your interpretation of um, if, if it's gloomy and cloudy for 12 straight days and you're down in the dumps, you know, the backward thinking would say, I am really sad because I, I haven't seen the sun for 12 days and I love the sun. In the course, it turns around and it would say, your interpretation of 12 cloudy days <laughs> is what's upsetting you. It's not the cloudy days. Or 12, 90 degree days, right. So you can start to get a sense that, that the interpretation problem is a problem of, of cause and effect being reversed. You know, where the ego's thinking is in there is saying, you're little, you're tiny, you're weak, you're frail, you're vulnerable. <laughs> You're a little bitty body, a little bitty person in a gigantic world, and there's all these big, powerful forces outside of you, and you better be careful, you know, because the economy could collapse, or AIDS could spread, or you may have a hurricane, or a flood, or, you know, there's all these things that, 
that you've got to be afraid of that are out there in the world. And basically, all that the Course is doing is it's saying the, all the fear and all the upset is coming from our interpretation problem that's in our own mind. That's good news in the sense that, gee, if I have made my mind up one way and I'm seeing falsely that I can, I have the power of decision in my mind to change my mind about how I look at the world, then I can, can give up the fear. Now that's the good news. It seems, it can also seem like, well, wait a minute here. It seems like a pretty big job because <laughs> there's lots of things that I'm afraid of in the world and there's even things that I'm, I'm not even sure but I, I feel like that are buried in my mind and I'm not even sure but there seems to be an awful lot of fears and it can seem like a big job going into the mind and, and looking at all these these thoughts and beliefs about the subconscious or unconscious thoughts or fears beliefs mm -hmm. what would you consider to be the best way to uncover those just wait until something happens or just dive in there and, uh, or ask Get into a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> that, that will do it. It flushes it up right away. <laughs> Just, well, you know, I mean, that's, that's the Course's path in the sense that the Course says, you know, whenever you're in relationship or, you, you know, you're in close proximity or, or it's this, these beliefs get flushed up like rapid because the mind has tried to deny them. And, and when you get into a relationship, the, the ego's basic urge is to project the guilt and project the, the pain outward onto, the, onto your brother. And so really, when that happens, it's, it's, not, it's not about, you know, poo-pooing the relationship or saying, I've got to get out of here or this or that, but it's like, oh, okay, what, there's something that I'm seeing in you, my brother, that, that I have denied or that I'm unwilling to look at in myself. And it just comes flying up. And another way, of course, is to study the Course because he lays it out. You know, he, he starts to talk about these beliefs. He talks about beliefs of time and space, which are pretty deep. He, he talks about beliefs and levels of the mind, and, and he starts talking about beliefs in the mind and everything. And as I've done computer searches through here, it's been fun for me just to go through and, and print out all these different beliefs that he talks about, all of them false, but all of them things that, that I need to look at, you know. And so I think... Just, as you just study the book, you, you get a, a great shot. Do you find that the more you study the course, the more uh, you don't have a subconscious or unconscious? It kind of, that is, uh, you're becoming more and more aware of your total mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like raising all these unconscious beliefs to the light. That it's not like you have to fight them, or it's not like you have to destroy them. But all they have to do is be to be raised up so that you can see, oh, this is just a belief that I've believed in, you know, and I can see, I can hold it up to the light of truth. I can see that it's backwards in cause and effect, or I can see that it's, it's not in line with the Holy Spirit's thought system. And then you, once you can see it, then it's dispelled. Now, there's a whole, in another sense, though, it, the reason it seems to go on and on and on <laughs> and take a while is that that basically there's all these beliefs but they're all sprays of the ego and basically it's a matter of, of going down deeper and deeper in the mind and being able to see all of the beliefs as false or I use the analogy sometimes you could think of um, like a skyscraper and it's night and all the office window all the office windows are black because the lights are turned off at night it, that's like the mind and the surface of the skyscraper where the flag's blowing, that's, that's where the experience is of being in the world. It's like not really being aware that you're standing on, on this giant skyscraper full of, of dark cornered beliefs. So you're up there and then basically the, the thing is of going down and literally it seems to be the experience of starting at the top and going down by the floors and going with the Holy Spirit and turning on these, these light switches in, in each room. And you can, it seems like, oh boy, this takes a while to go down and get all these. But, but there's, a, there's a big shift that can occur, and it only takes an instance, because there is a main switch for the whole building. <laughs> if you can get down to the basement where, where the main switch is, the ego is out of business, because then you flink, <laughs> the whole thing lights up. The, the main thing, too, is, remember we said that there's only two voices in the mind, and that's the Holy Spirit's and the Ego's. And you're deciding between one or the other every instant. But when it comes through all the...